Hi, I'm Ashley with j and Travel Adventures, and today I want to tell you how to make the perfect first aid kit for international travel. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Ashley, I don't need a first aid kit. Well, let me tell you, uh, nine times out of ten when you travel, you're right. You are not going to need a first aid kit. But all it takes is that one time that hubby hollers from a bathroom at the Miami airport that something's going on in his stomach and he's having such trouble that he doesn't think he'll be able to leave the bathroom and you're not going to be able to make your flight. Or it takes that one time that the 10-year-old son, who's going on 25, decides that he knows best and he's going to wear his brand new tennis shoes to Disney on an all-day park day. And two hours in, he plops himself on the curb, hollering his heel is on fire and he cannot walk another step and he wants to go home. Or... The best time that I ever used my first aid kit was when we were making a long midnight flight from LA to Kuala Lumpur and it is horribly bumpy over the Pacific and a stranger sitting next to me says, ma'am, excuse me, can you look in the pouch in front of you and see if there's a puke bag? Because I think I'm about to get sick. I suffer from motion sickness. All it takes is one instant like those, and you will, for that point forward, the rest of your life when you travel, you will swear by having a first aid kit. Now, many gurus will tell you that you need to have a first aid kit like this, which this first aid kit is great when you are going primitive camping or when you're taking the soccer team to a tournament. Okay, I give you. Take this with you. But when it comes to international travel with hubby or with a couple family members, this is really overkill. Not only is it overkill, it takes up precious space and weight in your suitcases, and it's going to spend most of its time in the checked baggage, in the bottom of the bus, in the plane, in the boat, where it does you absolutely no good. So I'm going to tell you the absolute perfect best first aid kit you will ever have and to be exactly honest i go so far i don't have one of them i have one of them in every one of the carry-ons that we take and you ready now pay attention this is your first aid kit a snack size ziploc i go so far like i said in that i have one of these in every of our carry-ons Hubby has a side pocket on his backpack that I don't know what it's for. There's one of these in there, and it goes in before we travel, and I take it out when we get back home. I put mine into that pouch that holds my computer at the very bottom, and my computer sits on top of it, and it just stays there. In our roller bag that we do as carry-on, we've got this weird side pocket. I shove this in there, and it stays there the whole time. And like I said, nine times out of ten, we do not ever pull this out. But it's that one time that you need it that you will be sold. Now, let me tell you what all is in this. Let me turn the camera down so you can see. Okay, here is my first aid kit for our travel. The reason I pack up one in every one of our carry-ons is it's rather common for us to split up and somebody's going one way with hubby and somebody's going with me. And if I have one in every one of our carry-on bags, I know that somebody else has the things with them. The other thing is that most of these items you're gonna be able to find in your bathroom cabinets. So feel free to grab them from there. But if you need to have links or don't have some of these supplies, feel free to use the affiliate links that I'm gonna provide in the comments, as well as the list that I, of things that I include in my first aid kit to make it easier for you to find these items. The third thing is that if you grab these things out of your medicine cabinet, check their expiration date. In our life, we rarely ever use Imodium, so it's more likely that I'm gonna throw it out before we actually use it. But So you wanna make sure if you're in a desperate place that you're gonna to need to use this stuff, you wanna make sure that it's actually still good enough to use. Last thing is make sure you know what the doses are of to give different people. So either write your instructions on your first aid kit so that you'll know how, whether to give one tablet or two tablet and how often to give them, 
Or what's even easier is snap a picture of the back of the box on your phone and just keep it there. So what do I put in my first aid kit? First off, Imodium. Makes people be able to get out of the bathroom and get on the plane and actually make it home. The next thing I have in here on the same line is Pepto-Bismol tablets. They're chewable. I like when you do not have to find a water source and things work quickly. On that same line, different line though, I put in their Tums. There's nothing worse than riding along with somebody that's belching and complaining about heartburn. Solves that problem. The other thing I have in here is my Tylenol container. And you can tell that I've used this one a lot. It actually in here does not have just Tylenol. What I do is I open it up and I split it. And so I have in here a cinnamon and ibuprofen because one is better of course from fever if somebody all of a sudden randomly shoots up a fever the other thing is it's good for aches and pains and headaches so I combine them both in the same tube they're distinctly a different look and so you know which one's which and so it's easier to save on space the other thing I include in here is um, bonine Bonine is mechothorzine, and the reason I specifically like the brand of Bonine is one, it's cheap and over the counter. Two is that it is chewable. Another fact is that if somebody's feeling nauseous from motion sickness, the last thing they want to do is have to swallow some water. It's chewable, it's either cherry or orange, depending on which flavor you buy, and it starts working within 10 to 15 minutes. The last reason that I choose Bonon over Dramamine, this is non-drowsy. It is just horrible if somebody takes Dramamine, who is very susceptible, and you're on a walking tour and you are about dragging that person to get them to finish the tour. This is non-drowsy. So then you have your bumps and brew supplies that I keep in here. Um, for cuts and things like that, you got to have your alcohol cleaned up. You don't want things to get infected. So for those, I keep a couple of cloth band-aids because they ha they stay on better, they bend, and they also deal with sweat better. The other thing I include that works better for heels and blisters is that I have one of the waterproof foamy kind of adhesive band-aids that once you stick it on the back of somebody's heel or on their big toe or any of the rest of the places that people get blisters, this will make it where they'll be able to go for the rest of the day. The final thing I include in my first aid kit is cough drops. It is more common that I hand a cough drop to somebody in the same aisle that I am in when I'm flying than it is that I use them. But there's nothing worse to be in the middle of the night and you've got somebody coughing and coughing and coughing around you. So this is what I put in my first aid kit. And like I said, it is just enough to get you by. Because in all honesty, nowadays with most travel, you're gonna be on an airplane, you're gonna be in an airport, you're gonna be in a hotel. And if you have something major like a broken bone or a concussion, you're within their phone or hollering distance of somebody medical that can handle the major things. The goal of this is to handle those things that are annoying that will mess up your trip because that one little blister on that little boy's foot can ruin a day. Now, if you found this video helpful, please give this a thumbs up. And if you want to find out more great tips like I provide today, please subscribe to my channel and enjoy more of the great videos that are out there. Thank you.